Hi, I'm Dr. Billy Wu, and in this video, we'll be looking at plastics and providing an introduction to polymer science. First of all, let's talk about why polymers are important. In short, they're used in millions of products, including bottles, packagings, textiles, cars, electrical appliances, and many others. The reason why they're so popular includes the fact that they're low density, meaning that they're light, but they also have good thermal and electrical resistance. Furthermore, they're corrosion resistant, easy to manufacture, and low cost. However, they're also a major source of waste, with over 400 million tonnes of plastic waste made each year. It's also been estimated that there are over 5 trillion pieces of plastic already in our oceans, and that many of these can take over 450 years to decompose, posing a huge ecological challenge. Now, let's have a look at what a polymer actually is. Here, we can define a polymer as being a material made up of long chain molecules or macromolecules. These chains are made up of atoms which are held together by covalent bonds and can be visualized in a similar way to a metal chain. These are made by polymerizing a monomer base unit, which is our basic building block. Here, we have the example of ethylene, which has the chemical formula of C2H4. This basically means it has two carbon atoms and four hydrogen atoms, which are held together by covalent bonds. During polymerization, the double bond between the carbons are broken and then reformed with neighboring monomers. Here, you can see that ethylene has been converted to polyethylene, where we highlight the repeating unit. In commercial polymers, there are about 10 to the 3 and 10 to the 5 monomer units per chain, and therefore we might write the general formula for a polymer like the below. Now, before we dive deeper into the different considerations in polymers, let's have a look at the different types of chemical bonding involved in polymers, which will inform our understanding of their behavior. The first key type of bonding is the covalent bond. This is where electrons are shared between atoms, which generally forms a very strong bond. This is what holds together the carbon backbone, an example where you see covalent bonds is in the case of methane, which has the chemical formula of CH4. Here, the hydrogen atoms share an electron with the carbon atom. In the previous example with polyethylene, we have covalent bonds between the carbon backbone and the hydrogen atoms. Next, we have van der Waals forces, which arise due to the Coulombic attraction between a positive and negative dipole these bonds tend to be weaker than covalent bonds. In this example, we have polyvinyl chloride, or PVC, which has a similar structure to polyethylene, but has a chlorine atom in the place of one of the hydrogen atoms. Here, hydrogen forms a positive dipole, whereas the chlorine produces a negative one. The opposite dipoles attract each other, holding the macromolecules together. When a large enough mechanical force is applied, these van der Waals bonds are broken, allowing the polymer chain to slip and then form new bonds. Now, when we consider the different types of polymer, the type of polymer chain that forms is critical. Here, there are three main types of chain structures, linear, branched, and cross-linked. In the case of linear chains, as the name suggests, these are long linear chains of polymers where covalent bonds hold the individual carbon chain together with weaker van der Waals forces holding the separate chains together. This can be thought of in a similar way to the structure and behavior of spaghetti, where the linear chains easily slide past each other. Next, we have branch chains, where the chains have branches on them, meaning that they aren't fully linear. This can be thought of like a tree branch, where the branches make it harder for the chains to slide past each other. Finally, we have cross-linked chains, where individual polymer chains are connected to each other with strong covalent bonds. This can be thought of as like a net, where individual strands are strongly held together, which restricts the slippage of the polymer chains. Another key concept in polymer science is understanding whether the structure is crystalline or amorphous. What do we mean when we say this? Well, when polymer chains are well ordered with regular packing, we call these crystalline. This occurs more in linear chains. However, as chains get longer with branch structures, this makes it more difficult for crystalline regions to form, 
We therefore call these disordered regions amorphous, which means without clearly defined form. In most polymers, they exhibit a combination of crystalline and amorphous regions, and therefore we call these semi-crystalline polymers. When we look closely at a polymer, it generally has a structure similar to the image in the bottom right. When we magnify in, we see we have a nucleation site where the polymer starts. Then crystalline regions branch out from this where in between the gaps we have an amorphous region. So now that we've covered the core concepts around polymer science, we can start to look at the different types of polymers and their key characteristics. First of all, we have thermoplastics, which generally soften when heated and therefore are easy to mould. For that reason, they're generally used to make things like plastic bottles, which are injection moulded. Here, thermoplastics are either linear or branch chain polymers, which allow the polymer chains to slide by each other easily, giving the heated polymer good flowability. Next, we have elastomers, which are stretchable and tough. Here, the polymer chains are partially cross-linked, with the number of cross-links defining the stiffness of the material. One of the most common types of elastomer is rubber for tyres. And finally, we have firmer setting polymers, which are heat resistant and hard. Here, there is extensive cross-linking between polymer chains, with the structure usually being highly amorphous due to the number of cross-links preventing ordered regions from forming. An example of a firmer setting polymer is epoxy, which is used as a glue. Here, two chemicals are mixed together to form the cross-links. Now, one of the key properties of any material are its tensile properties, i.e. if we pull on it, how will it respond? In the case of polymers, these tensile properties are generally non-linear. Here, the behaviour is largely defined by chain entanglement effects, which means how tangled do the polymer chains get and how easy is it for them to slide past each other. Longer chains and more boggy side groups generally results in more chain entanglement, as force is applied to the polymer, the chains will start to slip past each other, initially in the amorphous regions. With even more strain, the chains start to straighten and eventually stretch. At this point, the polymer's stiffness increases as the mechanical properties become more defined by the stiff carbon-carbon bonds rather than the weaker van der Waals forces involved when chains slip past each other. Of course, this mechanical behaviour is also highly temperature sensitive. Here, at higher temperatures, polymers are generally very flexible, but at lower temperatures, they become brittle. The temperature that this happens is called the glass transition temperature. We can observe this by looking at the stress-strain response of the material and also how the specific volume changes with temperature. Here, specific volume refers to the number of cubic metres occupied by one kilogram of material. At low temperatures, the polymer is generally stiff, which is represented by the high gradient on the stress-strain curve. Here, at low temperatures, the polymer chains are closer together and the van der Waals forces are stronger, restricting chain slippage. As the temperature increases, the stiffness of the material decreases and there's a slight increase in the specific volume. Here, the material is referred to as a glassy material. Then, as we heat the material further, we reach the glass transition temperature where the material becomes even softer. Here, the heat causes the polymer chains to become further separated from each other, weakening the van der Waals forces further. This increases the specific volume significantly and the polymer enters into a levery regime. Finally, as we heat up the material further, the stiffness further drops with significant increases in specific volume. This is the viscous flow region. Now, let's expand on what we mean when we say viscous behaviour. Here, we generally say that a polymer has viscoelastic properties, but what does this actually mean? In the first instance, let's say we have a time load profile shown here, where we apply a force at time t1 and then remove it at time t2. For a purely elastic material, we'll get an instantaneous strain response at t1 which remains until the load is removed at T2, where it then returns back to its original shape. For a viscous material like honey, whilst we apply a load, we get a constant strain increase in the material till the load is removed 
and then it stays in its strained position. A viscoelastic material is therefore a material which exhibits both elastic and also viscous behaviour. Here we can see an elastic response at T1, but then as the load is held, the strain in the material increases, and then when the load is removed at T2, we get an elastic recovery of the material. So, to summarise, polymers are found in millions of applications today because of their low density, good thermal and electrical resistance, high stability, ease of manufacturing and low cost. They're made up of long chain macromolecules with strong covalent bonds along the carbon chain and weaker van der Waals forces between the chains. These polymer chains can either be linear, branched or cross-linked with the number of cross-links generally making the material stiffer. These polymers can be crystalline, which means that the polymers are well organized, or amorphous, meaning that they're disordered, with most polymers being semi-crystalline. The main categories of polymers are thermoplastics, which mostly have linear or branched chains and soften when heated, elastomers, which are stretchy, and thermosets, which are heavily cross-linked and heat resistant. The mechanical properties of polymers are generally non-linear, with their behaviour being defined mostly by chain entanglement effects. Here, as the polymer is strained, the stiffness can increase as the polymer chains align. These mechanical properties are also highly temperature dependent, with higher temperatures giving a soft and flexible material, but with this becoming brittle at lower temperatures. We call the temperature at which this occurs the glass transition temperature. And finally, we saw that polymers generally exhibit viscoelastic behavior, which is a combination of elastic and viscous responses to a mechanical strain. So, hopefully this video was a useful introduction to polymer science. Do check out some of my other videos if you want to learn more about material science.